Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the five most common mixes used in RC airplane setups. If you stay in the hobby long enough, you'll eventually want to create mixes on your radio for different types of airframes. In this video, I'm going to show you the five most common mix setups you'll probably want to be able to create on Edge TX. We're going to start out with the aileron to rudder mix. The idea on that one is to allow you to do a coordinated turn. So if you move the aileron, you get a little bit of rudder to go with it automatically. The second one we'll cover is the Elevon configuration. That's for a traditional wing setup. So if you have a wing with just two surfaces on the back, those are called Elevons, and you'll need to mix your aileron and elevator together on that type of airframe in order to get it to fly right. For number three, I'll show you how to create a differential thrust mix, which ties throttle to a rudder. So if you have a twin motor setup, for example, and you move your rudder one way or another, you can actually add throttle so you can maybe increase your rate of turn or do some really interesting maneuvers in flight. Number four will be a flaps to elevator mix. The idea behind that one is when you deploy flaps, you can also mix in a little down elevator to keep the nose from ballooning up. And then we'll close out with a simple V-tail mix. Now I have two basic rules for these mix setups. Number one, I don't really want to get into a debate on the legitimacy of mixes. The fact of the matter is plenty of people use them. There are certain airframes that require them. So whether or not you're a fan of mixes, it doesn't matter. That's not what this is about. It's about teaching you how to do it in case you decide you need to use a mix. The second rule for my mix setups is that I like the cumulative weight of the mix to equal 100% of the weights. The idea behind that is I don't want to create a mix where the weight is over 100 because that can overdrive a servo and I have personally ruined servos doing that. For that reason my mixes always wind up with a cumulative weight of 100%. Now you can adjust the amount of throw given to either surface that's fine but try and end on 100% so you don't overdrive your servos. All right let's get started. For these examples, I've stripped out all the non-essential surfaces, so this is not a correct input setup for a complete flying wing. I'm only using the inputs necessary to show you the mix. On the input screen, I've defined an aileron input at 100% and a rudder input at 100%. Real simple, just a 100% weight going into the mixer. Next on the mix page, on channel 1, I've got my aileron connected, and on channel 3, I've got my rudder connected. On the aileron, when I turn on the mix monitor, you can see that as I move the aileron stick, we go all the way to 100%, but also notice on the rudder line, you can see the rudder moving 20%. That's the coordinated turn aspect. So if I move my aileron stick to the left, the plane will roll to the left, and I'll also get a little bit of left rudder, 20% in this case. And as I go to the right, I'll get 100% movement on my aileron and only 20% movement on my rudder. The memory aid that I like to use when it comes to mixes is that I focus on the surface that needs correction and I add the surface that does the correcting. So in this case, because I'm looking for a coordinated turn and it's the rudder that needs to be moved, but I want the thing that moves the rudder to be the aileron, my rule is rudder is the primary surface, the thing that needs correction, and the aileron input is the thing that's going to make the adjustment to the rudder. So in this case, on the mix line, notice that I've set my weight at 80% and my aileron at 20%. The reason I did that is so we don't overdrive the servo. So if I move my aileron stick all the way over to 100%, I only have 20% movement on the rudder until I actually actuate the rudder. Now if I go ahead and apply the remainder of the rudder, that's the 80%, notice how the mix line stops at 100%. That means we're gonna send 100% of the weight out to the output. I can further illustrate this point by bringing up the channel monitor. I'll move the aileron and notice that I've got my 20% movement for the mix and the output on my rudder. Now I'll move the rudder all the way over and you can see that we wind up with an output of 100% on the blue line and that matches the mix line at 100% in red. Okay, so that's a coordinated turn and if I go left, my rudder goes left. If I go right, my rudder goes right. Mix number two is Elevons. Again, this is a traditional wing setup, so if you're ever gonna fly a wing and you're not gonna use a flight computer to handle your mixing for you, you'll wanna know how to do this on Edge TX. We'll get into this setup by clicking Model and going to the input screen, and all I've defined for inputs on this one are 100% aileron and 100% elevator. That's it. 
Now on the mix screen, remember what I said, we always focus on the thing that needs to be corrected by the surface that does the correcting. We've got two channels on our receiver controlling surfaces on a wing. So on channel one, we're gonna call that one aileron, and on channel two, we'll call that elevator, just for clarity's sake. So on the first channel, the primary line is aileron at 50%, and when I turn on the monitor and move my stick 50%, you can see that my even though my aileron stick is all the way to the right, the mix line only shows 50%, and it does that because I've set a weight at 50%. The reason we do that is because we need to leave room for that elevator to move as well. Keep in mind, this surface is both an aileron and an elevator. That's why we call them elevons. So if I move the stick up, you can see that we complete the motion of the mix, and we're all the way at 100% on this surface. So on this mix, the aileron is the thing that needs to be corrected, and the thing that does the correcting is the elevator stick. The next mix line is the elevator, and all we're doing is flipping the equation. On this line, we have the elevator that needs to be corrected, and the thing that does the correcting is the aileron. So as I move my elevator stick, you can see I have motion to 50%, and then when I add aileron, that finishes the motion out at 100%. This will be a little easier to see in the channel monitor. So bring the channel monitor up, and I'll move the aileron stick, and you can see I've got one aileron going one direction and one going the other. That should be fairly familiar to you on a basic airplane setup. Normally that's what you do with ailerons. And as I move the elevator stick down, you can see that both surfaces move in one direction. And when I go north of center, they go in the other direction. So that's common for an elevator setup. Now, if you have problems and the servos are not moving the way you need them to move, sometimes you might have to flip things around. You might have to change the weights. So for example, if my elevators weren't working correctly, what I might have to do is go into the elevator weight and then click on the weight value and just invert the sign. So instead of 50, I have negative 50. And then on this line, I can edit that one. And for the weight, click on the weight and invert the sign. And now when we go into our channel monitor and move the stick, you can see the elevator now moves the opposite direction. You can also manage that with output, but the moral of the story is that sometimes you have to change the sign in order to get your surfaces working the right way. What I like to do is focus on one first. I like to work on the aileron first and make sure that works. And then I work on the elevator and make sure that works. And then I change the sign as appropriate to make the surface move in the correct direction. So very simple mix for elevons. You simply have the thing that needs to be fixed. In this case, aileron is first. And the thing that does the fixing is the elevator stick. And on the second line, we have the elevator. That's the thing that needs to be adjusted. And the thing that's going to make that adjustment is the aileron stick. Differential thrust is kind of fun. If you've ever had a twin motor plane, it's really kind of cool to be able to use your rudder to advance or retard your throttle. So I'll show you how this one works. In this example, you might notice that we are driving the output higher than 100% and actually lower than zero. The reason that's okay in this setup is because the overdrive happens on an ESC. Let me show you what I mean. We'll click on model and enter the input screen. And in this case, we're only looking at the throttle and the rudder. So we'll flip over to the mix screen and you'll see I've got two mixes defined. I've got a port throttle and a starboard throttle. Notice the input is the same because we have just one stick for throttle. We don't have two sticks for throttle, just one. So we only need to create an input using the single throttle line. Remember, we only have one throttle input defined. Okay, so the thing that needs to be adjusted is a throttle, and the thing that's going to do the adjustment is the rudder. So in this case, the throttle right now is set at zero. The throttle stick is all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and advance the throttle, and you can see that the mixer allows me to go from negative 100 through zero to 100. That's the full sweep of the throttle. So that's basically idle or power off all the way up to full power. And that happens for both motors simultaneously. There's the port motor and the starboard motor because they both have a weight of 100%. 100 here, 100 here. Now remember, I said we're gonna exceed 100% in this case, so I have the rudder set at 30 on both the port throttle and the starboard throttle. And the reason we do that is because if I'm already at full throttle and I make a left-hand turn, what I wanna have happen, I can't advance the right motor anymore, but I can reduce the left motor. So as I make that turn, notice what happens. The starboard motor actually shows a value of 130, but because the ESC is calibrated, it just ignores that value. But the port motor is actually re reduced by 30%, and we're only at 70% power. So as I make a left-hand turn with my rudder, we have less power on the port side and equal or max power on the starboard side. 
The same thing happens when we move the throttle all the way down. If we make a left-hand turn, we want to reduce the power output on our port motor, which we really can't do because it's already at zero, but we want to increase the power output on the starboard motor, and that's what's happening here. So the negative 130 is kind of ignored. The ESC will only go down to zero, which means there's no change to the port motor, but the starboard motor increases by 30%. And of course, if we're at center stick or thereabouts, you can see that as I move the stick to the right, we have an advancement on the port motor and a reduction on the starboard motor. And if I move the rudder to the left, we have an advancement on the starboard motor and a reduction on the port motor. There you go. That's a differential thrust mix. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the flaps to elevator mix, but I get questioned on this one all the time, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it. First thing we'll do is click the model button and take a look at the inputs page. And on the inputs page, I've only defined two inputs. I've got my elevator stick, and for flaps, I'm using the SA switch. Now we'll flip over to the mixer and turn on the mix monitor, and I'll show you the basic operation here. Now the main objective with the flap to elevator mix is that when you deploy flaps, sometimes the airplane will have a tendency to nose up, and we counteract that by pushing forward on the stick or adding down elevator. So as I move my elevator, you can see that I, I go to 80% on the top and the bottom. In the flap to elevator scenario, we're back to driving servos, so we don't want to exceed 100% on the output. So as you can see, when I move the elevator stick, I only go to negative 80 and positive 80 with no other modifiers in place on the mixer. However, when I add the mid position for flaps, you can see my elevator is now at 10% and that is forward stick. So as I move my stick forward, the indicator goes off to the right. And then when I bring my flaps to the full deployed position, now I've got 20% nose down. And as I push forward, we go all the way to 100%. Now you might notice that I only have an 80% weight and a 10% weight, and that only equals 90%. So how are we getting to 100? Well, the answer is that because flaps normally don't go up unless you want to run spoiler runs, they only go down. I'm using an offset to ensure that the flap motion only applies forward elevator. We don't want down elevator as well. So when I click on edit, I've got a weight of 10% and an offset of 10%. And you can see that the elevator is neutral when the flaps are retracted, but when I add the first stage of flaps, we go to 10%, and the second stage of flaps goes to 20%. So I'm accomplishing that by using an offset of 10%. And that way the elevator only goes forward when we deploy the flaps. Without the offset, you'd wind up with a value of negative 10, zero, and 10. We don't want that. The second line for the flaps themselves doesn't really apply to the mix, but it's how I'm controlling the flaps in this setup. You might notice we've got a 40% mix line, but only a 20% weight to find. We're using the same technique in this one where I'm using a 20% offset. Again, the idea is to keep the flaps only going down, not up. Part of the reason I'm not really a big fan of this mix is because normally when the plane settles down, that balloon effect will go away. So what I like to do when I'm flying with flaps is I just fly the plane. When I deploy the flaps, if the plane has a tendency to nose up, I'll just give it a little nose down until it calms down. And normally you can let that go and you're back to normal. But again, a lot of people seem to like this one. That's why I showed how to do it. The final mix recipe is for a V-tail. In this case, you've got two surfaces on the tail of the aircraft that act as both the rudder and the elevator. So what normally happens in this configuration is as you move the rudder, you want both surfaces to go left or both surfaces to go right. They travel together. When you move the elevator, they travel opposite. So one surface will come in from the left to the right, and the other surface will come in from the right to the left as you pull the stick back. And the opposite thing happens when you push forward on the stick or the elevator. The port side control surface will travel from the center line to port or outboard, and on the starboard side, it'll travel from the center line outboard as well. So they're traveling in opposite directions. Let me show you what that looks like. We'll click on model and go to the input screen. And I've only got two surfaces defined in the inputs. We've got elevator and rudder, both set at 100%. On the mix screen, we've got two things that we're going to mix. We're gonna mix the elevator and we're gonna mix the rudder. So remember the rule, the thing that needs to be corrected by the thing that does the correcting. So in this case, for the channel two connected elevator, I'm asking for that elevator surface to be moved when I apply rudder. And on channel three, I'm asking for this rudder surface to be moved when I apply elevator. Let's take a look at what this looks like in the channel monitor. I click on model 
and I move the elevator, notice that I have two surfaces traveling in opposite directions. Remember I described that early on. In a V-tail, you have one coming in from the left, another one coming in from the right. Those are generally traveling in the opposite direction. It all depends on your physical servo layout, but that's normally how it works. And then when I do down elevator, the servos then push the elevator surfaces in opposite directions again. So that's why they look like they're opposed, even though both surfaces are moving the correct direction to make the aircraft go down. On the rudder, as I move the rudder to the right, you can see that both the elevator and the rudder surfaces are moving simultaneously in the same direction. So that's a V-tail mix. Now, I'll move the rudder all the way over to the right, and then I'll move the elevator up, and you can see that we stop at 100% on full elevator deflection. And then as I move the stick all the way down, you can see that we stop at 100% on full rudder deflection. And that's what a V-tail mix looks like. Well, that wraps up my video on how to create the five most common mixes on Edge TX. I hope you found the information useful, and if you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.